Welcome back to Titanium Man Garage. And it's another day and another transmission. So I shot a video on uh, adjusting the linkages on this Magnum. Uh, it was probably about a week or so ago. Got everything running and shifting good. And all of a sudden the uh, reverse wouldn't work again. So uh, I heard something flopping around in the, in the case so I decided to rip it out. I didn't shoot a video on how to remove this because this one was a little more trickier. You got the rear differential back there and you got your drive shaft going from the rear diff to the transmission and I wasn't sure how I was going to get that out. Um, so what I ended up doing was I got everything loosened up. Uh, taking the transmission out itself was actually really easy but getting that, uh, that axle shaft out was a little bit of a trick. So I didn't videotape that because it was kind of a learning experience for me. So what I ended up having to do was uh, loosen the bolts off the back and I had to hang up the brake lever and there were some bolts back over here and I uh, loosened up the bolt for the shock and I slid this back. I was able to get the, the shaft out that way. See, so yeah, once I got that pin taken out, I took a air hammer and I popped it back, slid it off the shaft, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six bolts holding the transmission in place. I was able to pop that up without removing the exhaust. And once I got that pushed back out of the way, she came right out. It was a piece of cake. But I said it took a little thinking on my part. Um, I've always been one of those guys that. Uh, you know, you look at something and you just kind of know how it goes together or comes apart. And I know some of you viewers out there that are watching are like that too because I've spoken to some of you guys. So I didn't tape that part because I figured you guys did want to hear me cussing and swearing. Or maybe you would, I don't know, it'll probably be funny. So here's the transmission sitting on the bench. Um, once again, this is new for me, so I'm going to take this uh, cover off. And I'm thinking it's probably going to be the same issue like the 6x6. Six six. I think that... Uh, um, that dog gear is either stripped out or uh, something in that shifter is uh, locking up. So I'm going to go ahead and take that apart. That came apart pretty easy. <laughs> oh, so look at that. So here's all your uh, your shift mechanism, your shift forks. Uh, everything popped out with uh, the case being on its side. And that actually goes in here. All right, so I got a couple things going on here. Um, show you quick. So like I said, uh, this is uh, it's actually pretty interesting the way this is designed. I've, I've never taken one of these apart. But this one's designed actually the opposite of like a scrambler or, or that 6x6 transmission, everything is built into this case. <laughs> so your springs are in here, your shift forks here. It's kind of interesting. So I want to show you what I found. I'm just going to try to lay this up and get it to act like a transmission with that being in the case. So right now I'm spinning it. And I'm a neutral. I'm gonna try to get a better shot from this side. I, I spun it around. So that's your dog gear right here. And that moves back and forth. When I shifted that forward, that locks into this gear. That's your drive gear. Now when I pull it this way, this is reverse. Let me push this back. You can see uh, where this dog gear connects to this gear, this is worn completely off. So when you throw it in reverse, it was just stripping. Let me 
Let's see if I can turn that. See that one? Next one's rounded off right here. And same with that. There's there's three little tabs on that gear. And when I shift this up into reverse, these teeth grab those teeth and it throws it in reverse. Well, that's all rounded off. So that's why it didn't work. So the guy had a plow on here, so I'm guessing training was starting to go and he just kept jamming it in a reverse until she finally rounded it off. Uh, I was able to get it adjusted where it would work at low idle and get it to shift. But uh, once it warmed up and uh, I started driving it, try to throw it in reverse when it was warmed up, she wouldn't go. So let me show you what I mean if I... There. See how that's uh, meshing with those teeth. And this is probably, here we go. And that's rounding off and it was just grinding. See? So I hope that gives you a little overview of uh, the transmission, how the dog gear works. This is your low gear. And uh, when you pop that in, and you got this in control. And I push this in, and now I'm in low gear. So that works good, but you can see that's all rounded off. There's two things I could do. Try to take a press and pull this all apart. Or, if you're like me and you got connections, I actually have a spare tranny laying around from, uh, I think it was a 335. They're pretty identical. So I'm gonna strip that one apart. I'm gonna take that gear out, or this whole, this whole cluster out, and I'm gonna replace it. I also found something else wrong. All right, so now this is the, uh, the basically the drive gear. But, uh, ooh, what's that down there? Ha! Hang on a minute. I see a broken part down there. I was going to show you the chain was sloppy. What the heck? <laughs> I'm thinking that clip is supposed to be holding something in place. So when I spin this, you see how that chain is kind of sloppy in here? That's way too sloppy. I'm about ready to jump off. So this clip, uh, must hold something on. I'm gonna have to find that out. So what I like to do is uh, I like to look at exploded views on uh, partzilla.com. I probably shouldn't drop names, but if it helps you guys out, helps me out. I'm not getting any kickbacks for na for name dropping, but um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. And uh, when I tear the other transmission apart, I'm going to see how that looks. And uh, hopefully build a good transmission. So this one's beautiful. This is the Magnum 325 case. Actually, transmission. And the inside of this is beautiful. Everything spins nice. Uh, let's see if I can... Everything spins nice and free. The teeth on here are... Here, let me get my thumb out of the way. Teeth on here are in a really good shape. But he thought there was something wrong with this one. But this thing actually is really clean. I'm not sure what the issue with this one was. He said it wasn't shifting, right? Um, but yeah. It uh, actually looks really good. But the gear ratio is different from the 325 to the the 500, so I don't really want to use that transmission. So I'm going to try to piece together the other one. And I got myself a excellent set of gears right here. This should all shift nice like it should. Let's see if I can get it to work. There we go. That's there. Perfect. So if I wanted to make this easier, I could probably just take this case off, throw it in the transmission, and call it a day. 
I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet. Uh, I still got to find out what's going on with that chain and the chain slop and uh, I'll put this bad boy back together. Alright, I'm back. So after doing some research, uh, the 325 transmission I took apart for parts has a taller gear on the output shaft. The gear on the output shaft on the 500 transmission was a smaller gear. So the theory is taller gear, more speed, right? So what I did was I robbed that big gear and I put it on here and I'm going to take all the guts for the uh, 325 that way I don't have to separate all this stuff because it uh, it does look like a pain in the butt so I'm going to use all the shift mechanism put that back in the 500 engine with the taller gear and this gear is actually a little smaller compared to the 500 so that's my theory Okay, so what I like to do first is uh, take a wire wheel, get everything cleaned up really nice, the surfaces. I like to use lacquer thinner, and uh, that actually takes the gasket off pretty good. I clean everything up with that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple drops of oil in here and here. So when I put this together, it should slide in real nice. The trick's going to be to try to get these shift levers hooked up with the shift fork. So that's going to be my challenge. Right, here we go. Putting it back together. I took it completely off the pan. You want to try to have your shift forks all in place. This will go in here, and it'll. The spring goes back and forth and clips into the. There's little notches in there. So you want to be in neutral when you go to install this. So the dog gear is in the center. The one up top is not engaging in here. So we are now in neutral. Now, when I go to install this, there is a little nubby right here and a little nubby right here. When I slide this in, these have to line up with those little nubbies and uh, that controls your shifter, and that's your shift linkages. I gotta get that pushed down and line it up with the gear at the same time. And uh, this is uh, just for video purposes, so normally I'd have this case set all cleaned up and I'd have sealer on here. Um, I already rebuilt the one transmission and somehow my video got deleted. So I'm uh, rebuilding the other one, just kinda mock it up and show you guys how it's done. It's so basically this gear down here will line up with this gear here. And I'm gonna try to get those to line up. Fill in that one, fill in that one. Sounds like she went in. I wish I could have showed you guys how I lined that up, but basically there's uh, the nubby, it went in one, and then the other one, and then she dropped down. Now it's not all the way down, so I'm gonna have to turn the shift forks at the same time to get it in the hole and then that should pop down.
All right, first things first, I got the transmission dropped into place. It sits in uh, grooves right here. And right here, just trying to get that drive shaft slid onto the output shaft. And I'm gonna throw the bolts in. There's uh, one that goes down here, one here, two that go here, and then there'll be one, two that go here and here. That'll bolt everything into place. And then I'm gonna shove that rear axle forward and there's three bolts here. Once I shove it forward, I'll put them bolts in. Hook the shock back up, put the bolt in. And then I have four bolts that go right here. And once I get that all bolted up, I'll hook up my linkages and adjust them, and this bad boy should be good to go. So what I did was, I put all the bolts in loosely just to get the transmission set in place. And now I'm gonna push that rear drive in, and get everything all lined up. All right, everything's good and tight. I think that's a German word. And now to adjust the rear axle shaft. So you got a couple things going on. The shaft has to slide back and that hole lines up. And another thing is um, I've heard people that uh, once you pull that pin out, they have a hard time putting it back in. Well, I've done a little trick. Uh, I grind the edges off kind of ends off because they usually get mushroomed over and uh, so that way it'll slide in there real nice and what I do is I take an air hammer like this that way you're not killing yourself trying to move this in and out so right now it's tight it's not gonna move in this right. so what I'll do is I'll cheat Grab this bad boy and pop her into place. Almost. There we go, I don't know if you can see that. I got the holes lined up. So, I mean, worst case scenario, if you didn't have an air hammer, you could use a hammer, pop that into place. And uh, what I do when I uh, remove them too is I get them halfway out with the air hammer. And then uh, I use a little extension like this and it shoves it all the way through the hole and pops it out. So I learned this trick years ago because these were such a pain in the butt to get out. And I found this to be a lot easier way. So I got like a rounded bit.
Look at that. Slick as snot. Now she's in place. And uh, I'll do that with the, uh, the front drive too as well. Just makes things a whole hell of a lot easier. All right, and the same with the front drive. Let me tell you, this thing was a pain in the butt to get out because it slides forward. Well, take that back. It slides back, it comes off the front differential, and then you gotta slide it forward. Well, it only goes back so far, and I barely cleared the front diff to try to get it out. So I'm gonna try to shoot this so you guys can see how I do this. And like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna get a good shot. Another, another little trick I like to do is I'll put grease on the shafts. Clean these up really good. Throw some grease on there. The cleaner you can get these splines, the easier this is going to be to go in. Throw a little grease on there. Grease on the other side. All right, let's see what I can do. in here too. I gotta clean that out. Alright, I got it started. This is where that air hammer would come in handy right now. How easy that slid in. Woohoo! Now I gotta get the other side lined up. I gotta line the holes up. Make sure you're not a tooth off. There we go. You can see that I got my hole lined up. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the doll pin. Voila! One installed front drive. All right, there you have it. I just gotta hook up, hook up my shift linkages. I got everything all buttoned up in the back. And just in case you didn't see earlier, these were the two bolts I was talking about. And uh, yeah, I'll get my linkages hooked up, get everything lined up, and I'll show you how this bad boy fires up and shifts. There you have it folks. Transmission all installed. Runs beautifully. I just gotta get the wiring for the winch working. This bad boy should be good to go. Thanks for watching, and like always, till next time. <laughs>